I feel or downhill too fast or too slow Which way is the fastest way to go? The winner takes it all, yes, but why does he win? Well, there's an explanation to nearly everything And you're about to enter the Swedish Winter Sports Research Center Oh hi there pal, I'm just watching the cross country sprint here, it's such a great event for the audience, you know? The high speed, the man versus man, high frequent starts and mighty finish, it's just a great discipline. But you know what, I tend to forget that this is just a 10 year old kid we're talking about here. But if you want to know everything there is to know about this 10 year old kid, you know what to do? Just lean back, kick off your shoes, put your feet up and just enjoy the movie. This is Hans Christer Holmberg. He's the director of research and development at the Swedish Winter Sport Research Center. Holmberg is for sure one of the most respected researchers in the world when it comes to cross-country skiing. And he played a big part in the development of the sprint in its early days, just trying to understand the physiological parameters behind the discipline and also in the making of the sprint stars such as Tobias Fredriksson, Peter Larsson and Björn Lind. Uh, we quite early selected the fastest gears and uh, because we we have the very strong belief that it's much easier to improve endurance in a fast athlete rather go from the opposite way uh, and we were not so so uh, oriented to to select the persons that were winning the sprint event from the beginning i mean all the four heats we were more interested in to select the persons that were winning the qualification heats and we uh, tried um, quite early to start the sprint team and we had a, uh, a tight cooperation and we, we named it as a triangle between trainer and, and uh, athletes and uh, the researcher. And from my point of view, all these persons are researchers, but in different ways. I think that athletes, as in Sweden by that time, uh, Tobias Ferriksson, for example, he's very much uh, oriented for development. He was interested in how to improve his technique, he was interested in tactics, he was very interested in uh, equipment development. At the same time in Sweden we have Ola Ravald, who was very interested in, in development of tactics and also if perhaps he asked uh, the research field uh, how it could be possible to, to change techniques in order to ski faster. 10-15 years ago the, the technique was uh, not as explosive as it is today. Uh, the development has been from a longer uh, movement to a shorter and more explosive movement. And some of that is technique but it, it is also a lot of uh, practice behind it. We are today using some resistance training, we are using some sledges that we have behind us. We have some wheels that we can use, some resistance. But we also practice a lot of uh, uh, high speed training, both in flat terrain and but also for the diagonal in, in a little slight uphill terrain. And, and uh, the importance of that is to have a high speed but also to, to maintain a high speed during both in the traditional skiing when you have to accelerate to try to get away from the others but also in sprint skiing that you have to have both in the prologue but also in, in uh, the finals that when you have to pass some other athletes you must be explosive which means that we have used a lot of different kinds of training sessions uh, from 5 to 10 seconds explosive training up to 1 minute when we do a lot of high speed training and the terrain is for diagonal both in flat terrain we can do diagonal strides in, in yeah, in really flat terrain but also in uphill terrain and the same with the double pooling we do it in the flat terrain but also in the uphill terrain and that is some things what we have been working a lot with the, the last five or ten years in, in our teams in Sweden. We quite early identified that double pooling in the classical style and as we called in Sweden gear three uh, was crucial techniques in these spe special uh, styles. So we were very much oriented, how can we improve double polling? How can we double pole faster? And also in the G3 technique or V2, 
how can we ski faster and how can we use this technique also uphill? Force is the acceleration of a mass. If we look at power, it's the velocity and the force times each other. In practice, this means that athletes have to use lighter loads and move them really fast and also have to provide very heavy loads and move them very slow with the intention to uh, move them as fast as possible. Uh, which, and if you look at sprint skiing, those athletes that are the best can both produce a really high force and can also produce a very fast movement. Uh, sprint skiing is a very long sprint event if co we compare with 100 meters and 400 meters running sprints. Uh, in uh, cross country skiing sprints, the race duration is between 2 to 4 minutes. The ability of a sprint skier to maintain power output and maintain high forces during his double poling, his skating technique and uh, diagonal technique is very important for the overall race performance. This means that the sprint skiers has to have a really good balance between the ability to produce a high power and high force and to maintain this high force and power throughout the entire race. The two most successful teams uh, during the last years has been Norway and Sweden in sprint. And uh, so that's also a very interesting part of it, I think, uh, that we have a good cooperation between Norway and Sweden also in order to improve uh, and uh, uh, extend our understanding of the event, which I think is uh, very exciting. Traditionally, I like very much the long events, but uh, as a researcher, I have a little bit special interest in the short uh, sprint events because it's a little bit more complex. There are different heats and so on, and some aspects that are really interesting. And um, I will also uh, like to introduce Eivind Sambak from uh, NTNU in Norway to talk a little bit more about the sprint event from his perspective. If you look at the best sprint skiers, they have very high aerobic and anaerobic energy delivery. They also have efficient techniques, especially at high speeds. They are also able to generate extremely high speeds in the final spurt without being fatigued. Or they are able to generate these speeds being fatigued. It is not an easy way to become a very good sprint skier. You have to train a lot, very hard and also with high speeds. The sprinting discipline, it's here to stay, you know, and the development has been quiet and right, but you know, for the future, it's like the backman turning overdrive one. Hey, I'm trying to make a move here. As the backman turner overdrive one said, you ain't see nothing yet. Sorry about that. But for the future, friends, just keep watching the channel, because you know what? At the Swedish Winter Sport Research Center, the answer is just a question away. I feel or downhill too fast or too slow Which way is the fastest way to go? The winner takes it all, yes, but why does he win? Well, there's an explanation to nearly everything And you're about to enter the Swedish Winter Sports Research Center